Welcome to my channel and I'm glad to see you again. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to analyze and interpret Likert scale data as ordinal measure. My name is Tito Kan and this is Tito Kan Max Solutions, a YouTube channel for improving the knowledge of how to do things. But before I go into XPSS for the demonstration, let me quickly give you the synopsis. Likert scale is a rating scale developed in 1932 by Rensis Likert to measure aptitude through questionnaires, and it consists of either a statement or a question followed by a series of five or seven answer statements. In a questionnaire, respondents choose the option that best corresponds with how they feel about the statement or questions, and this helps to capture their attitude, opinions, or behaviors, and their level of agreement or level of disagreement and feelings. Generally, the analysis of Likert scale data has generated a disparity of opinions on the suitable analytical approach. Some authors and reputable statisticians have reported that using parametric test approach to analyze Likert scale data yields robust outcome, regardless of whether the data is normally distributed or not. In some other views, it has been strongly advised that the analysis of Likert scale data is restricted to the use of the media and the mode as the best central tendency in their descriptive statistics and any of the suitable non-parametric tests. As a result, I have found that the best choice of analytical approach depends on your research objectives and how you classified your data set. If you classify the data as ordinary measure, then the data is considered as not normally distributed because they are rated, ranked, or ordered. Then the best analytical approach will be to use only the media or the mode as a measure of central tendency in their descriptive statistics. The percentage frequency distribution of response in each category can also be calculated. These choices of statistics can help you determine the attitude of the respondents or the attitude of the customers towards the Likert items. And to test hypotheses as ordinary measure, the suitable analytical techniques will be the use of non-parametric tests such as Mount Whitney U test, Spearmarrow correlation, Kruskawalis test, and ordinary regression among others, depending on your research objectives. Whereas, if you classify the Likert scale data as interval measure or as interval scale, the analytical approach shall be discussed in my next video. So subscribe now and share this video to be notified when I publish the next video. Now, let's go into XPSS for the demonstration on how to analyze and interpret Likert scale data as ordinal measure. This is the data for this demonstration, and it has already been loaded into XPSS. Please kindly see my video on how to load Likert scale data into XPSS with emphasis on value labeling and scale of measure to learn how this data was loaded and coded very fast. You can also see my video on Introduction to XPSS Software for Beginners, Part 1, to learn how to load data into XPSS. The links to the video are given in the description section and also stated at the end of this video, among others. This data is fictitious and consists of 20 Likert case of Tiger Not Me constructs, generated from questionnaires to measure the attitude of 532 male and female respondents of different age groups towards the consumption of the Tiger Nut Milk in my locality. Now click on the Variable View button to go to the Variable View window. As you can see here, the type of measure for the Likert items is Ordinal Measure. So the data is hereby classified as Ordinal Measure as it is. In the Values Property column, the gender is coded as 1 for male and 2 for female. Why the Likert scale is coded as follows. Strongly disagree is coded as 1. Disagree is coded as 2. Neither is coded as 3. Agree is coded as 4. And strongly agree is coded as 5. This is how the other Likert scale items have been coded. Now, the suitable analytical approach for this kind of data is to perform descriptive statistics by concentrating on calculating only the media and or only the mode as measure of central tendency 
and calculate the percentage frequency distribution of the different categories of the Likert scale, and then test the hypothesis using the non parametric test, such as the Man Whitney U test, as the case is in this video. Now, go to the menu bar and click on Analyze. From the sub menu, put your cursor on Descriptive Statistics, and from the drop down options, click on Frequencies to open the Frequencies dialog box as you can see. In this dialog box, click on the first tagger not make, scroll down to the end, and press down the shift key on the keyboard. Then click on the last tagger not make to select all the tagger not make variables at once. Then click this transfer arrow key to move them to the variable box on the right. Now click on statistics to open the frequencies statistics dialog box as you can see. Now check the box for media and then check the box for mode. This selection will compute the median and the mode for each Likert item. There is nothing else to check in this place. Then click continue to close this dialog box. Everything else by default is good, but you must ensure that this box for display frequency tables is checked by default. And if not, check it now. Then click OK to produce the results in the output window. The results have been produced, and this includes the statistics table and the frequency table for each Likert item. As you can see from the statistics table, the median and the mode have been given for each Likert item respectively, and there are some missing values for each item, which for this demonstration is not any problem. You can choose to report the median or the mode, but for this demonstration, I will report the two for only the first five Likert items and you will interpret for the remaining items. This will be simple for you to do following my lead. Now, since the median and the mode do not have any decimal or fractional value, we will just go ahead and interpret the outputs according to how the Likert scale was coded. If there were decimal values, then there would have been a need to calculate the range for each answer statement like we will do in the next video when we classify the Likert scale data as interval measure. But for now, recall that 1 is for strongly disagree, 2 is for disagree, 3 is for neither, 4 is for agree, and 5 is for strongly agree. So accordingly, the median and the mode indicate that the customers or respondents show relatively the same attitude and behavior towards the tagger not make. For example, the median and the mode for the first Likert item is 4 and 5 respectively. And this indicates that the respondents agree or strongly agree respectively to like the tagger not make with addictive 1, since 4 is for agree and 5 is for strongly agree. For tagger not make with addictive 2 and addictive 4 respectively, the respondents strongly agree at both levels to like the tagger not make as the median is 5 and the mode is also 5. And 5 as a code stands for strongly agree. For tagger not make with addictive 3, the respondents agree at both levels to like the make as the median and the mode is 4 each and 4 as a code stands for agree. But for tagger not make with additive 5, the median is 3, indicating that the respondents or customers neither agree nor disagree to like the tagger not make, since 3 as a code stands for neither. Whereas the mode is 4, indicating that the respondents agree to like the tagger not make with additive 5. And remember, 4 as a code stands for agree. Now, for the frequency table, I will interpret the first two tables, leaving the remaining ones for you to do as a practice. In this table, you are expected to report the percentage frequency distribution of the scale. However, since there are missing values in the dataset, you are hereby strongly advised to report only the values in the valid percent column. If there wasn't missing values, you can report just the percentage, which would have been the same as the valid percent. So for Likert item 1, which is I like tagger not make with addictive 1, about 0.2% respondents strongly disagree that they like the tagger not make with addictive 1. 
why 0.9% respondent disagree that they like Taganot milk with addictive one. But 9.6 respondent neither agree nor disagree to like the Taganot milk with addictive one. Whereas 44.5% and 44.7% respondents agree and strongly agree respectively to like the Taganot milk with addictive one. This means that a greater number of the respondents like the Taganot milk with addictive one. Similarly, for frequency table 2, which is a like Taganot milk with addictive 2, 0.8% of the respondents disagree to like the Taganot milk with addictive 2, while 3.6% of the respondents neither agree nor disagree to like the Taganot milk with addictive 2. Again, 34.7% and 61.0% agree and strongly agree respectively to like the Taganot milk with addictive 2. This also means that a greater number of the respondents like the Taganot milk with addictive 2. No one strongly disagree in this table. This shows that the respondents or the customers are showing positive attitudes, feelings and behavior towards the Taganot milk. So, the Tiger Nut Milk should receive lots of sales in the market since a greater number of the respondents like the Tiger Nut Milk with various additives. Now, let's proceed to see how the likeness for the Tiger Nut Milk is distributed across the male and female gender. That means we have to test the hypothesis, and to do this, we have to use the Man With Me U test as the most suitable no parametric test for this ordinary data. Now go to the menu bar and click on Analyze. From the sub-menu, put your cursor on No Parametric Test, and from the drop-down options, click on Independent Samples to open the No Parametric Test dialog box. Depending on the SPSS version you are using, the procedure on this dialog box might be different. However, click on the Setting button to go to the Setting page. In the Choose Test Options page, the default selection here is that the system should automatically choose the test to perform based on the data you loaded. But usually, this option does not always produce good or adequate results. So select the radio button for customized test to make the non-parametric test options in this box become active. Then check the box for Man with New Test 2 samples, which is the only test we are interested in for now. This selection will perform an independent sample t test as a test of hypothesis indicating whether the distribution of tiger nut milk across the male and female gender is significantly different or not, or whether to retain or reject the null hypothesis. Now, click on the test option in the box on the left. On this page, ensure that the significance level is set at 0.05 and the confidence interval is set at 95%. Now, click the button for feeds to return to your data. Click on the first Likert item, scroll down to the end, press and hold down the Shift key on your keyboard, and click on the last item to select all at once. Then click on this transfer arrow key to move them to the test feeds box on the right. Then click on gender and click on this transfer arrow key to move it to the groups box. Now, click Run to process the hypothesis and produce the results in the output window. As you can see, the results have been produced and it comes in a table of columns for the null hypothesis, the test statistics carried out, the p-value, and the decision to be taken. Now, Double-click anywhere on this table to open the Model Viewer page, as you can see. This page is divided into two vertical views, the Main View and the Auxiliary View. The Main View contains the table of results, consisting of 20 rows for the 20 Likert items. Each of these rows on the table that you click on produces detailed bar chart and statistical information at the Auxiliary View. But the most important information in this table that you should concentrate on are the p-value column, designated as XIG, called significance level, and the decision column. But to help in the interpretations of these results, 
you have to note the following statements. If the p-value is greater than 0.05, then there is no statistical significant difference in the distributions of the tiger knot make between the male and female gender. But if the p-value is less than 0.05, then there is statistically significant difference in the distribution of the tiger knot make between the male and the female gender. As you can see in the serial number 1 to 3, 5, 7 to 14, and 16 to 20, the p-values are all greater than 0 0.05, implying that there is no significant difference in the distribution of the tiger knot make across the male and female gender, and also indicating that the tiger knot make with the various additives are liked by everyone equally. So by decision, we will retain the null hypothesis because the distribution of the tiger knot make are the same across categories of the gender. Whereas in serial number 4, 6, and 15, the p-values are less than 0 0.05 meaning that there is significant difference in the distribution of the tiger knot make across the male and female gender, indicating that everyone does not like the tiger knot make with the various additives equally. So by decision, we, we reject the null hypothesis for these liquid items because the distribution of the tiger knot make are not the same across category of gender. With this analysis, we have been able to determine the attitude feelings or behaviors the customers or respondents have towards the tiger knot make in the locality. This is how to analyze liquor scale data as ordinal measure. In my next video, I shall demonstrate how to analyze liquor scale data as interval or scale measure. I hope this video was useful to you because right now we have come to the end of this video. I hope you will be able to replicate the procedures I demonstrated in this video to perform liquor scale data analysis of your own data in XPSS and interpret it as appropriate. If you like this video and you want to see more video content like this, please give this video a thumbs up and please share and subscribe to my YouTube channel to encourage education and learning and so that you receive notifications every time I publish new and useful content. Subscription is free. Thanks for your time and subscription and I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye.